Thanks, Ambassador. Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me? Are we wired in properly here? If you'll forgive me for a minute, I, I, uh, we have some distinguished guests who I'd like to introduce. But first, I, I, uh, some of you might be wondering what it's all about. Um, we believe that the foundation of wealth creation in our global economic system is natural resources. And the current unprecedented drawdown and mismanagement of our natural capital poses enormous challenges for the world. As the world's population grows to over 9 billion in the next 40 years, the demand for food, water, and energy will double, further testing every country's ability to provide for its people's needs. The loss of renewable natural resources, such as forests, fresh water, fertile soils, and natural pollinators, through unsustainable extraction and the resulting competition for these increasingly scarce resources, will lead to instability, conflict, and radicalization as entire populations see no possibility of current needs being met or the future needs of their children. We as a world will need more out of nature to survive and prosper, more fiber out of our forest, more protein out of our, our oceans, and more energy to power us. Many of these challenges will need to be confronted in the developing world, where not many of the world's, where, where many of the world's resources are located, but also where people are the most vulnerable to the volatility and commodity prices. This is not only a problem, however, for the developing world, as many would think, but for the entire world, we all depend on a consistent and growing supply of natural resources. ICCF, the International Conservation Caucus Foundation, has created the Council of Nations to proactively respond to the crisis by building and leading a global network of policymakers, working with corporations, intergovernmental organizations, NGOs, multilateral institutions, with interest, expertise, and capabilities to prepare and implement innovative, top-down natural resource wealth management plans and conservation solutions in the developing world. Utilizing our unprecedented partner network, many of whom are represented here tonight, the CCN will assist global parliamentarians with know-how, expertise, and resources to build capacity to formulate and implement sound market-based policies and programs and practices for conservation and good natural resource management. To this end, we're encouraging you, those leaders of nations who are present here tonight, and there are some two dozen represented tonight, including a, a half a dozen heads of state and many ambassadors and ministers. We encourage you to create whatever you will call it, a caucus, a club, a all-party policy group, a coalition within your parliament that are focused on good natural resource management as we are, and to become our bilateral ally within your parliaments so that we can liaise for you with the leadership in the U.S. Congress and with, you with programs, with educate our members of Congress because you, in fact, become our teachers, we your students, and where we might help with, with expertise and our own experiences, we're, we would be happy to do so. We will help you with programs, par partners, policies, in any way that we can. And we hope to visit you. We hope to visit as many of you as possible. We hope to bring delegations to visit you. And any time you have delegations visiting us, we'd like to engage them and to get to know you better. Through this reception, many of our heads of state will have brief comments to make. We also have one great example of a public-private partnership that we will that we will talk about a little bit, uh, that we're happy to share as just an example of how our partners work together. Uh, I'd like to thank a, a couple of supporters in particular for their help bringing this together tonight. Dow Chemical, Alliance for Global Conservation, the Global Environment Facility, uh, Nazi and Joe Moynian, Lucian and Robert Duvall who are here tonight. Thank you all for your support. And before I introduce our first our first VIP, I have a letter to read that's just been handed to me a few minutes ago. Uh, 
William Jefferson Clinton, September the 19th. I'm pleased to greet all of those gathered for the launch of the Leaders in Conservation reception, as well as those members around the world unable to take part in tonight's event. The Conservation Council of Nations represents an historic partnership of world governments dedicated to preserving our planet's future. In the developing world, particularly, the impact that your collaboration could have on economic development and political stability is immense. Tonight's event is a wonderful opportunity to look for new ideas like the forestry program that can create real change on behalf of our world. I applaud all the members of the Council of Nations as well as the United States Conservation Council and its partners in industry and nonprofit for showing such dedication to this global fight. Best wishes to you all for an evening of new partnerships and continued cooperation, Bill Clinton. First, I'd like to introduce the Prime Minister of Grenada, Tillman Thomas. The Prime Minister was first elected Grenada's House of Representatives from his home province of Patrick in 1984. A graduate with a degree in economics from Fordham and an attorney by trade, he returned to Grenada in 1978 to work in his government's human rights and legal aid program. After serving over 10 years in the House of Representatives, he was elected Prime Minister of Grenada in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of Grenada. Thank you, Mr. David Barron, heads of government, officials of ICCF, ambassadors, distinguished ladies, gentlemen, leaders in the conservation movement. I'm very pleased to be part of this reception here tonight, and I want to thank Mr. David Barron for the work he's been doing and for the invitation extended to me to be part uh, of this gathering here tonight. I really recognize the work you've been doing and the importance of conservation. Just as I have been advocating, we need a global governance to govern the planet, so too I believe we need some form of governance for conservation and preservation of heritage, because we need to pass on to future generation what we have inherited. However, we cannot ignore the challenges that we are faced with. We in Grenada, we have contributed significantly to conservation in uh, Grenada. Uh, not too long ago, we had a, an issue in Grenada where we, an investor wanted to build a hotel and that was posing a threat to a, a local species of bird known as the Grenada dove, the only kind on the planet. And as a result, uh, a group was established to save the Grenada dove. And uh, well, for other reasons, the project never, or de development never take place, and uh, the Grenada dove has been saved. But we cannot ignore the fact that there is that debate going on between development and conservation. Where you have large unemployment and people are looking for bread on the table, and you go and talk to them about conservation, sometimes they are not willing to, to, to listen. They are concerned about the immediate. Uh, this is why we need to have alternative programs other than those who are purely coming to invest for profit and without concern about the future well-being of those who are living in the developing world. So it's a challenge that we have to bear in mind. But we are really concerned about conservation in Grenada. After Hurricane Ivan in 2004, we set up uh, a special program to replant the, the mangrove and the oyster beds in Grenada. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have in Grenada declared three areas, you know, areas that we say that are marine protected areas, two in Grenada and one on the island of uh, Karikou, because we really want to, um, uh, to protect and preserve the, the, our resources in the waters, and to ensure that we do what is best in the interest of uh, our uh, citizens. Again, because of our efforts in conservation, we had a visit by the Director General of UNESCO in 2009. Because, I mean, those of you who know St. George's, uh, our capital, it's like a heritage city, and we want to preserve some of the structures 
uh, in, the, in the city. But again, I say it, it, it's a challenge, uh, and we need to get support if we really have to embark upon such uh, preservation. So again, I'm really um, pleased to be here with uh, you tonight. I really want to encourage you in um, what you're doing. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we need to have some global uh, governance of this planet, and so too we need to have some form of, of global governance of conservation and heritage preservation, because we need to really preserve what we have inherited for a future uh, generation. And we need to live in healthy communities. We need fresh water to drink. We need good fruits. We need organic fruits and so on. And these things are possible if we really put the structures in place and we build a relevant partnership. This calls for partnership. But sometimes when you cannot find the appropriate partner, you're forced to get involved with uh, developers that sometimes not in the best interest of developing states. So with the advent of information communication technology, I believe that we could communicate with each other, we could establish lines of contact, and we could support and help each other, those of us who are really concerned about um, uh, conservation. So I, I really, um, again, want to thank you for extending this invitation to me, and uh, I'm looking forward for us to, to work together to do whatever we could to, to conserve uh, and to really uh, do what is in the best interest of not only this generation, but for future generations. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Prime Minister. I'd like to introduce Sakia El Elba George, the President of Mongolia. He was elected President in 2009 as a member of Mongolia's Democratic Party. He had twice previously served as Mongolia's Prime Minister and the Vice Speaker of the Parliament. He's proven his dedication to reform in Mongolia, having established their first independent TV station, first independent newspaper called Democracy, and founded Mongolia's first Entrepreneurs Association. And he's a Harvard man. Mr. President. Your club is only two doors away, you know. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, my country has uh, 3 million people and 50 million cattle and 1.5 million square kilometer land. If you are looking for the business or for the conservation, I think that's the country. And uh, you know, some of you already have been in Mongolia and some of you may be thinking about to go and I would like to extend our invitation from Mongolia, come to Mongolia, and now you have uh, that presidential invitation to visit my country. And uh, you know that Mongolia has a largest grassland. Also, we have a nomadic heritage. Almost 40% of our people is still pursue their nomadic way of life. And there are, Mongolia is the one of the 10th richest country by the mineral resources in the world, second fastest growing economy in the world. Last year was Mongolian currency, the strongest currency in the world. And Mongolia is open country. Since 1990, we are making dual transition to political reform, to economic reform. Today, Mongolia is chairing community of democracy. I think if you would like to come to see those opportunities uh, those uh, opportunities come to Mongolia, and of course we have a great relations with the United States of America, and uh, next year we will celebrate 25 years of the uh, diplomatic relations between our two countries. Last month, in June, I visited the White House, I met the President Obama, and we had a wonderful talk, and I told that Mongolia, America has a common interest, common strategic interest, we are together fight for that. We are together dream for that. You know, Mongolia committed our men and women in uniform in Iraq. Today we are serving together in Afghanistan. And those mutual bonds, values are very important between our countries. There are a number of big corporations in Mongolia. And you know, conserving our 
nurturing the environment is very important issue in Mongolia. And if you would like to, to see that country how is running in terms of the environment, country how, we, how is running in terms of those universal values, country is how to trying to develop. You know, we have a two big neighbors, China and Russia, and it's easy to fly, of course, from China or Russia, easy to fly from anywhere from the world, and welcome to Mongolia. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce a Norwegian friend, and then we're going to enjoy the refreshments and socializing a little bit more, and then we have some other guests to introduce a little bit later. Eric Solheim is one of the most prominent members in Norwegian politics, having served in the parliament for many years. He was party leader from, from 1987 to 1997. He was granted leave from the parliament to lead peace talks between the Tamil, Tamil Tigers and the Sri Lankan government, resulting in a truce, a truce in 2002. He currently serves with two portfolios, and it's interesting that these two portfolios have been combined, aid and the environment. And he's doing a wonderful job with those. I don't, he may not tell you, but I'll tell you that Norway is the largest conservation donor in the, nation, in the world today, not just percent of, of GDP, but in gross dollars. And, and they're doing incredible work. It's good to have you again. Thank you so much, and ladies and gentlemen, of course, for, for Norwegian, you really feel at home when you come to such a, a place like this, where there are ships all, all over the uh, all over the walls. I mean, we are proud to be the nation of Leve Eriksson, the first uh, person who re discovered, as it was said, North America. Uh, uh, we are also a big shipping nation today, so being in this yacht club, it must be the only yacht club in the entire world located in a place like central Manhattan. Uh, we, we, we really didn't, we were not really able to find a place because we believed it should be at the Hudson River or, some, or somewhere when it was the yacht club. Leave that aside, I, I'm, I'm asked to come here to speak about rainforest. And rainforest is 2% of the, uh, of the uh, cover of the world of the globe, but 50% of all the species of the world are in the rainforest. In Indonesia alone, 1,600 different species of birds. I'm told that there are 30,000 species of what is called vascular plants. I have to admit I do not really know what a vascular plant is, but it <laughs> seems to be very impressive. Uh, but the point is very simple. I mean, the beauty of the rainforest, uh, the uh, enormous amount of butterfly, ants, or gorillas, and orangutans is simply so important for the, for the world to conserve. For the fight against climate change, for biodiversity, and to protect it uh, for the uh, livelihood of people living in the forest. Maybe not be the exact the best uh, environmentally friendly uh, uh, way of putting it, but this is, a way, uh, this is where, by protecting the rainforest, you can three, kill three birds in one stone. Climate change, biodiversity, and livelihood. What we decided to do with partners was to establish the so-called RED, which is reduced emissions from deforestation uh, and forest degradation, with the UN, with the World Bank, and of course, may, most importantly, with rainforest nations. The most uh, important one was Brazil. Uh, they have been leading in this field. Brazil, Brazil has reduced the deforestation rate in Amazon with 70% in seven years. That is enormously impressive. I mean, but to be frank, if anyone from this audience had gone to Brasilia seven years back and told the Brazilians, you can do this. You can achieve a 70% reduced deforestation, uh, deforestation rate in seven years you would have been kicked out as, yes, some kind of silly conserv uh, conser conservationist. Some people would have said, it's impossible, you can't do it, it will not, not fit with the economy, it's simply undoable. The Brazilians have done it with the support from us and others, but mainly they've done it through their own, through their own means, and this is by en without any comparison, by far the most important act 
any nation have done over the last decades to combat climate change as well as to uh, defend uh, the biodiversity. We are also working with Guyana, South America as another partner, partner. They have a very low deforestation rate, but it should remain so, and then they must be compensated for keeping it low. And we are working with Indonesia, with Brazil, the biggest uh, rainforest nation. Uh, President Yudhoyono has put Indonesia on a new path. They want to grow economically without destroying the forest. Businesses are responding positively. One business called Golden Agri uh, Company, that decided that they will not anymore, and it's in the palm oil business, they will not anymore uh, destroy the forest. They will not work on peatland, nor will they destroy the rainforest. They will work on degraded land, and they will let Swiss companies uh, uh, monitor what, what they're doing to make certain that this is done in the right way. So I, I have to say this uh, uh, red scheme, though it's in its initial phase, though a number of nations have not fully implemented it, but still I believe it's by, by with en, without any comparison the most successful development in the field of conser, uh, conservationism and um, uh, combat, uh, to combat climate change in the world over, over the last decade. Uh, let us uh, applaud the Indonesians and the Brazilians and everyone who make this uh, so, so successful and let us join hands with them to, to make certain that they are uh, moving uh, uh, even further ahead in that, uh, that, that direction. So th thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce a distinguished guest who has just arrived and will not be able to stay with us long. The, the President of Chad, General Idris Deby Itno, was made Commander-in-Chief of the Army in 1982. When the new Chadian government was formed in 1991, he was elected President. He's passionate about wildlife conservation and has led the creation of a very strong system to protect elephants from poachers and he's embraced a bold stance on environmental stewardship, most notably the Great Green Wall Initiative, which we awarded our Teddy Roosevelt Conservation Award uh, at, at our last gala in Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of Chad. Monsieur le Président. Mesdames, Messieurs, les membres du Congrès. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the Congress. Monsieur le Président du Forum sur la politique internationale de la conservation. Mr. President of uh, the International Politic of Conservation. Distingués invités, Mesdames et Messieurs. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, guests. Je voudrais remercier le Président du Forum sur la politique internationale de la conservation des ressources naturelles. I would like to thank the president of the conservation. invité à ce forum, mais d'une grande importance pour notre planète et surtout pour mon pays qui est exposé aux variations climatiques. I would like to thank the president of the conservation that uh, extended the invitation to me, especially for my country that uh, is concerned for many, many factors. Mesdames, Messieurs, nous autres Sahéliens mesurons sans doute plus que d'autres aujourd'hui les effets néfastes du changement climatique qui se traduisent par une sérieuse hypothèque sur la vie des pans entiers de nos sociétés. For us living in Sahel, the changement and all the aspects that we describe regarding environment are something that we are feeling every day and has a lot of uh, consequences in our life. A titre d'exemple, la disparition progressive du lac Tchad qui fait vivre plus de 30 millions de personnes réparties entre le Tchad, le Niger, le Nigeria, le Cameroun et même au-delà de ses frontières traditionnelles, tout comme l'ensemblement du bassin du fleuve Chari et du fleuve Niger 
sont ressentis comme des véritables cataclysmes. For instance, en effet, les conséquences de cette disparition quasi annoncée de ces importants, importantes ressources à nous, si les tendances actuelles se maintiennent, influeront de manière négative aussi bien sur les pays directement concernés que sur les autres situés plus loin pour lesquels ces ressources jouent un rôle de véritable rempart contre la désertification. The disappearing of the Lake Chad, which is a serious issue for us, Lake Chad that is being uh, between uh, more than five countries and uh, 35 million people depend on that lake to live. And uh, it's also a source of a lot of economy, but that lake is shrinking. And also we would like to uh, seize the opportunity to make sure that you can hear that and also help us. C'est pourquoi notre conviction profonde demeure qu'il est plus urgent de développer une plus grande solidarité internationale afin de faire face aux problèmes actuels que pose le changement climatique avec comme conséquence immédiate la disparition des ressources naturelles. This is why it's important for us to establish international dialogue and cooperation to really face those issues because without it we won't be able to face the challenges. Uh, une telle solidarité devrait permettre d'envisager des solutions plus holistiques et plus inclusives. Elle devrait plus concrètement permettre d'envisager des solutions hardies telles que l'édification de la grande miraille verte de l'Afrique ou encore le transfert des eaux du Bangui afin de reconstituer le lac Tchad pour ne citer que ces exemples-là. So, through the dialogue, we are sure that we can find solutions to the shrinking of uh, Lake Chad also be able to uh, bring more resources that can help people that depend on, on those resources. So it is imperative that the, like, the dialogue start. En tant que président en exercice de la communauté économique des États de l'Afrique centrale et du communauté permanent inter-État de lutte contre la sécheresse dans le Sahel, SIRS, il ne me paraît pas superflu de rappeler que si le monde attend beaucoup des États africains pour la sauvegarde de notre planète du fait des potentiels forestiers que recèlent nombre de ceux-ci, nos populations attendent aussi de légitimes compensations en vue de réduire leur dépendance à l'égard de ces ressources pour financer leur développement ou simplement pour assurer leur survie. As a chairman of such a huge subregional organization, I can tell you that our population, the expectation is huge on our populations, but our populations also are waiting, expecting the concrete step being taken so they can improve their conditions of living. Mesdames et Messieurs, quoi de plus normal pour nos populations que de recourir à l'utilisation de nos ressources naturelles pour la satisfaction de leurs besoins en particulier énergétique. Mais en même temps, quoi de plus dangereux pour l'environnement si l'on en croit des spécialistes. C'est pourquoi nous devons nous engager résolument vers la recherche d'alternatives qui concilient à la fois nos exigences de développement et la nécessité de sauvegarder l'environnement. It's natural for a population to want to use resources, but also it's important that we, we can give them an opportunity not only to work toward resolving the consequences on the environment. À cet égard, les énergies solaires et éoliennes nous paraissent des pistes les plus prometteuses. Nous devons donc, par conséquent, nous investir dans la recherche de solutions idoines en vue de promouvoir ce type de technologie. C'est dans cette perspective 
que le Tchad organisera en février 2012 le Forum national sur les énergies renouvelables. Aussi, devons-nous prendre conscience de la nécessité de rechercher des financements innovants pour nous permettre de faire face à ces nouveaux besoins. In this regard, solar and wind power energies seems to prolific track for us. We need them to endeavor for necessary solution to promote this uh, type of technology. It is in the perspective that Chad in that organization will organize in February of 2012 the National Forum of Sustainable Energy. We need to get aware of the need to seek innovative financing in order to face new needs. Mesdames, Messieurs, mais en attendant, le Tchad développe depuis quelques années une politique volontariste de la protection de l'environnement en général et surtout de la gestion rationnelle de ses ressources naturelles. Nous menons un programme de sensibilisation à l'endroit de toutes les composantes du pays, à savoir les partis politiques, les autorités administratives, religieuses et traditionnelles, les associations de la société civile, les associations de développement, les leaders d'opinion et les médias. Par ailleurs, des prix d'excellence se sont décernés aux personnes et communautés et autres groupements qui se sont fait distinguer dans cette action d'intérêt national. Des programmes d'éducation environnementale sont élaborés, introduits et vulgarisés au niveau des cycles primaires, secondaires et universitaires afin d'amener les jeunes à considérer l'arbre comme leur patrimoine commun et lutter efficacement pour la protection de la nature. Ladies and gentlemen, But while waiting, Chad is developing for some years now a policy in protecting generally the environment, and particularly the rational management for natural resources. We are setting up a national program. This will address political parties, administrative, religious, and traditional authorities, development association, resource persons, and media. Otherwise, aware of the granted We are shown merit for national distinction on this field, for pollution, environment, coverage, monitoring, and legal framework. Department, district, village reform, and we are working towards making those in a reality for our people and protecting the nature. For the success of all these operations, the government works for the identification of domain priority où sont attendues les actions concrètes. Des mécanismes de surveillance de la pollution et du couvert végétal, un cadre juridique attrayant, le rebosement dans nos régions, départements, sous-préfectures, cantons et villages sont mis en œuvre et d'autres sont prévus. La création et l'installation des pépinières dans toutes les circonscriptions ainsi que l'implantation de réseaux de distribution fluide des plans pour leur mise en terre. Le gouvernement envisage aussi de créer un fonds en faveur de la protection de la nature. All these toutes, ces, toutes ces actions visent à amener les Tchadiens à comprendre les forces interdépendantes qui modulent leur vie et leur avenir attirer leur attention sur le type d'action nécessaire pour leur permettre de maximiser les chances d'assurer leur survie et leur bien-être par l'exploitation rationnelle de la nature sans la détruire. Bref, améliorer leur qualité de vie. All these actions aim at bringing about all Chadian to understand not only the, the need for interdependence forces that run their lives in the future, to keep their attention on necessary actions to enable their maximization and increasing their chance to endure their survival and well-being by rational exploitation of their na uh, the nature without destroying it but improving their standing of living. We also expect to reinforce our cooperation in terms of environmental protection.
with qualified international organizations. Nous entendons également renforcer la coopération en matière de protection de l'environnement avec les organisations internationales et spécialisées et les autres partenaires au développement en vue d'atténuer les conséquences néfastes de gaz à effet de serre et rendre plus sain notre environnement. Je vous remercie pour votre bien aimable attention. Merci. Thank you so much. So we will continue to cooperate with international organization to make uh, our goals something that we can reach. Thank you so much. We have, we saved the, a, a, a great brief program for the last, but it's an exciting partnership that we'd like to highlight tonight. Mr. President, we'd be happy for you to stay if you can. It's a brief presentation, but it's, a, it's an important presentation for us because it's a demonstration of how the most important conservation NGOs are working with some of the most important con conservation-minded corporations in the world to achieve solutions on the ground. I'm happy to introduce our partner, Mark Tursik, the president and CEO of the Nature Conservancy. The T TNC is a leading science-based collaborative approach to conservation. Mark came out of the Environmental Strategy Group and Center for Environmental Markets at Goldman Sachs and is, has been doing a fantastic job with one of the best conservation groups in the world. Mark. Mark, come on up. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. It's a real honor to be here with uh, all of you champions of conservation, uh, political leaders, business leaders, and fellows uh, in, the, in, the, in the conservation business. Um, and at, nat at the Nature Conservancy, we say our mission is to save the lands and waters that life depends on. Um, to do that, we try to be very practical. We often work with business. Um, but I'm really pleased to talk about our partnership with Dow Chemical. You know, people have been writing about natural capital for a very long time, um, how humankind really depends on the services that nature provides, how we should think of nature as natural infrastructure, green infrastructure versus gray infrastructure. The problem, though, is this talk doesn't necessarily go anywhere, and we've been pushing for action, and it's really an honor for us to work with Dow Chemical, the world's largest chemical company, as they try to figure out, as a big global business, how they really depend on nature, uh, what they can do to value nature, how they can protect it so that their business thrives. Because if people better understand, in our view, how nature and human well-being go hand in hand, that'll be a great path toward progress. So it's my pleasure to introduce our partner, David Kepler. David is the Chief Sustainability Officer of Dow. Uh, David's responsible for guiding all of Dow's sustainable business and um, with no further ado, let me turn it over to David. Thanks, Mark. We're delighted to be working with the Nature Conservancy. You know, there's a lot of uh, challenges in the world today, whether that's energy or scarcity of water, and we believe we have solutions to those. But the reality is it's not just what we do, it's how we do it, and how we factor in the thought of uh, the value of nature and its services into our product design and into our manufacturing facilities is critically important to us as we go into the future. And we're just uh, delighted to have this partnership where we can think not only in terms of our strategy, but actually how we design for the future uh, to really factor nature into our program. So we're honored to be here. Uh, we have a long-term commitment to nature and conservancy, and now we're really trying to build that into our thought process and engineering. So thank you, Mark. David, thanks. Um, that concludes our program this evening, but let me tell you that, that um, w w what a wonderful collection of people we've had come through here tonight. We had planned this as a dinner. We had turned it into a reception because we knew that we would have a lot of people that wanted to come and go as they have tonight. But the audience is far greater than just those who've been in the room tonight. 
there are only a little over 100 people that have enjoyed this program, but, but all parts of this, in parts and in whole, will be projected to 13,000 U.S. congressional addresses and thousands of MPs, members of parliament in dozens of countries all over the world via our electronic communication network. So you can tune in and see it yourself. We have our own channel in YouTube. I welcome you to do it. But audiences like this are so important. But we've now the ability to project to a far greater audience, which we are happy that will enjoy this program tonight as well. Thank you for being here. God bless you.